What's up, Space Pirates? This is your captain, the Dread Pirate Doctor Disaster. And today, we have yet another game that has been released and is failing to make any kind of market impact. Life is Strange Double Exposure is being exposed as a game that nobody gives a shit about. We do not care. There was a time when this was a certifiable mega franchise. When Life is Strange 2 was released about four years ago, the game peaked at just under 470,000 concurrent players. But 2018 was a different time from now. Woke games like this were ascendant back then. There were still a shitload of people who weren't aware of the culture war and were still just going along with whatever the game journalists told them to buy in an unthinking stupor. Get your ass up! Well, many gamers have definitely snapped out of it by now. Games that are chock full of wokeness are getting their asses kicked nowadays, and Life is Strange Double Exposure is another example of that. It isn't the game in the series with the lowest player count, but it is pretty damn close to that, and it's easily the lowest rated game of the series on Steam with a 78%. The few people who are actually playing this thing do not seem to be enjoying it. Once again, we have an example of the modern audience that these AAA studios are always making their games for not being large enough to support a game that was made for them. And the rest of us can look at this game, kick back, and scoff at its miserable failure. It's so gratifying to leave you wallowing in the mess you've made. You're screwed. Thank you. Bye. Alright me hearties, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and also, don't forget to follow me over on Twitter, or X, or whatever you want to refer to it as these days, I keep a list on there of games lousy with wokeness pinned to the account at all times for your reference, my handle over there is Dr. Disaster one But okay, let's look at this Life is Strange double exposure situation that we got going on here. Now, the thing is, when I discussed this game the other day, I had a bunch of people telling me they were into the original game, telling me that they had really liked it. And that's cool. That game came out in a different time all the way back in 2015, and for most of us, we had no idea how pernicious wokeness would be. It wasn't quite as in your face, and we weren't acutely aware of what they were doing when this game popped up. Let me give an example of what I'm talking about. Back in 2015, Disney released their first Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, and I actually really enjoyed that movie. I used to be a Star Wars mega fan who had been waiting to see my hero, Luke Skywalker, back on screen for the first time in 30 years. The Force Awakens wasn't overtly shoving political crap down my throat, and I actually liked the movie. However, fast forward just a couple years after that, and Star Wars found itself in the middle of the culture war, and The Last Jedi came out, and it was what actually woke me up to what wokeness was doing to entertainment. That was back in 2017, and I have been rejecting this shit ever since. So, in any event, it's no surprise that a bunch of you played the original Life is Strange, and there's no shame in it. I hear that the original game was pretty solid. I've never played any of the Life is Strange games, but I did have a friend recommend it to me a long time ago. I watched a few videos of the game, and it just didn't look like something I'd want to play, but the point is, the franchise became overtly woke, shoving political crap down your throats by the time the second one came out. 
That one is literally a game where the father of a pair of Hispanic kids gets killed by police officers in a brutal fashion and the kids have to flee south out of the United States in order to escape the evil government who's hunting them. It's a progressive fever dream. But it sold well because, as I said, the world was different back then. 2018 was a different era. By my estimation, in the game industry, this progressive shit reached the zenith of its power back in about 2020, and the sales figures and player counts of the Life is Strange series really kinda tracks along those lines. Double Exposure just came out yesterday, and they hit about 8,500 players, and VG Insights estimates it sold around 31,000 copies so far. Now, let's compare this game to other titles in the series. The original Life is Strange hit about 18,000 concurrent players at its peak on Steam, and it's estimated to have sold a whopping 5.9 million copies. Life is Strange, Before the Storm, came out a couple years later as a prequel, and it had around 16,000 concurrent players at its peak, with an estimated 800,000 copies sold. Obviously, this was a drop-off, but it was a prequel, and that's kinda what you'd expect. But then, the sequel came out. Life is Strange 2 hit a whopping roughly 470,000 concurrent players on Steam. It was released in 2018 when certain people were obsessed with the identity politics shit, and it's estimated to have sold around 2 million copies. Interestingly, that is roughly most likely what Double Exposure needs to sell in order to break even, but I'll discuss that in a minute. We have one more Life is Strange game to talk about here, True Colors, which came out in 2021, when these types of games were starting to fall off. Its max player count is similar to what we're seeing with Double Exposure, and the number of copies sold, according to VG Analytics here, is about 440,000. So, if Double Exposure ends up selling that amount, it will have likely lost their studio a good chunk of money. These days, analysts estimate that AAA games cost somewhere between $50 and $150 million to make. If we assume double exposure is on the bottom end of that $50 to $150 million estimate, somewhere around $50 million, and if we assume they spent some on marketing the game as well, let's assume maybe $10 million, then they need to sell well over a million copies of the game to break even. The game costs 50 bucks, and the studio only takes home about 75% of that once whoever sold the game, whether that be Steam, or the PlayStation Store, or GameStop, whoever it is, once they take their cut, the studio is left with 75%. That means the studio makes $37.50 per copy. If we assume they spent this $60 million on the game between marketing and production, they would need to sell 1,600,000 copies to break even, and I just don't see that happening. The game is going to lose money for Deck 9 and Square Enix, because games like this just don't sell any longer. Gamers have woken up and abandoned this crap, and the modern audience isn't large enough to support them on their own. But I am going to leave it there. Drop your mockery of this game and Deck Nine and Square Enix. Drop your mockery of them into the comment section below, and we will talk there. Thanks for watching, me hearties. If you haven't already, your captain is inviting you to subscribe to the channel and become a part of the crew. Life as a space pirate may not be glamorous, but there's always plenty of booty.